Greetings, my name is Patrick and you are watching Martlet Games. Uh, today we have a wonderful little one-shot in store for you all, a continuation of our previous adventure, Twisting Ashes, uh, which focuses on a coterie of uh, deputies here working for the Sheriff of Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, we are going to be picking things up kind of where we left them to an extent with the uh, with the group. If you want to see how things were, you can always go back and check out the VOD on YouTube, which link should be in the chat right now. But before we dive in, let's go ahead and say hi to our cast for the day, starting with Steven. Hi, everybody. Name's Steven Rieger, and I'll be playing Mr. Danny Smith's Gangrel. And next up is Ben. Hi, uh, Ben, Big Dad Walker. I am playing Chet, the Bono Hickey. And finally, Joanna. Hi, hey, I'm Joanna, and I will be playing uh, Liza, the ass kicking Toreador. She, she kicks severe ass. Massive ass. But uh, Twisting Ashes is a game of personal horror. Uh, you will feature or see uh, various, uh, we'll say, uh, touchy pieces of content featured here, up to and including physical, social, and emotional conflict, gas lighting, uh just vampires are very not nice people and you were watching a show about vampires so just take that into consideration uh we have worked out our red and yellow card system previously and we have uh several chats going on between the group here and to stay in constant communication and if they're at any point in time becomes uh, uh a moment where things get a little too uncomfortable we will reset the scene and proceed forward um and at any point in time if you watching uh also feel the need to step away come back if you uh, feel ready we'll be ready for you so that out of the way uh we're gonna go ahead and jump into business we last left the coterie in the parking lot of the St. Joseph's Church in Sioux City. Uh, St. Joseph's was the, uh, mm, we'll say hangout of a, uh, a group of local Thin Bloods. Uh, they were there looking for Marco Norteño, a VIP uh, La Sombra from Chicago, who periodically visits Sioux City to let off a little bit of steam. Uh, the coterie was sent at the behest of Elisabetta Giovanni, a member of the Hakata and coincidentally the head of the local circulatory system hub here in Sioux City. She is in charge of a uh, uh, establishment by the name of the Red Room, where uh, Kindred VIP can go there and uh, partake in some of the more finer vintages that uh, Elisabetta keeps on hand uh, for various reasons. But uh, upon their investigation, the Coterie discovered uh, Marco's tossed hotel room and one thing led to another. And they discovered that he had been abducted by this group of thin bloods. They unfortunately were unable to recover the La Sombra, but they were able to lure out the uh, currently assumed head of that thin blood group by the uh, she is uh, goes by the name of Pastor Katie. And Pastor Katie right now is currently physically restrained and gagged in the back of Chet's armored circulatory system panel van. 
uh, because someone decided that uh, it would be fun to spend the dots in that particular lore sheet for this one shot. Uh, the group uh, have driven downtown a few blocks away and have holed up in a parking garage, uh, trying to uh, court out the next, uh, we'll say, or plot out the next course of action here. Uh, it is currently 3 a.m., so there are a few hours to go before the sun comes up. Uh, just because it has been so long, uh, we have reset everyone's willpower and hunger. Hunger is back to one. Willpower is fully restored. Uh, Pastor Katie is in the back of the van, uh, currently uh, silent and out of the way. So the three of you may catch up <laughs> in character and figure out how you are going to proceed from here. So they got Marco. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Uh, we got one of theirs. Yes. Are you thinking an exchange? I'm thinking we need to do something quickly, though, because the sun will be rising here shortly. Yeah. I don't want to see what happens to Marco in a church full of stained glass, really. I, I, I really don't. No. Um, I look at Pastor Katie as I'm handling my steak in my hand. Now, we don't know what this will do with you. Apparently, with your little thin blood styles, this will either put you in torpor or just kill you outright. Um, I'm willing to find out. Unless you want to start telling us uh, some information. Um, Pastor Katie is, of course, currently gagged. Uh, she is just glaring at you, however. Uh, if looks could... If looks were sunlight, uh, you'd probably be a pile of ash right now where you stand. <laughs> uh, but she's... You can see she. You can see she's screwing her face up, and she is doing everything in her power to give you the stankest of eyes. Hmm. Let's see here. I'm just looking around the van. You got a cool van, Chet. There's got to be something that can help us out here. Uh, I got a couple of things I can do. Uh, when I became a Banu Hakim they decided they had to teach me at least something of the art and i am way too clumsy to be an assassin so listen uh, i spill out like a silver bowl and like a fancy like curved dagger i need a pint of her blood okay um are you are you going to be doing this here inside the van in this parking garage i mean if i use this part i mean you can, can. yeah I'm just I'm just checking with you here first. Okay, all right. So um, you you uh, scramble out of the driver's seat and you kind of make your way into the back. Uh, you've got the uh, the implements on hand mm -hmm. here. Uh, did yeah? Did, is she actually like um, like tied off to any sort of like loops here in the back? She's just she's definitely restrained pretty well. Okay. Um, so she's um, not going to be in any uh, in any way, shape, or form physically able to resist whatever you are wanting to do here, uh, Chet. Cool. Uh, what are you? What What's the game plan here, sir? Uh, I have the blood magic ritual, truth of blood, which will let me know if she's lying or not. Ooh, very nice. Uh, and hopefully I don't screw it up. It's on page 277 Thank of you. the core rulebook. Thank you very much. The bottom right. 277 of the core book. And everyone at home can actually follow along here. Liza's going to look at chat, look at the bowl, and look at the, uh, the knife and just say, is this some sort of Tremere shit? <laughs> uh, they told me to slap whoever told me Whoever asked me that question, but you are very scary, so I will not be doing that. Liza 
gets in a stance. She's standing up and she's just in her in her fighting stance and she's like, don't make me. And I'm she just, just enjoying steps the show. Back. <laughs> and she just steps back. Okay. All right, so you've uh you've gone and you've gotten the the blood okay so um instead of the regular ritual roll the caster immerses their fingers in the mixture and makes a resolve plus blood sorcery versus composure and a cult roll for every statement made by the subject all right um let me reference her sheet for just a second All right, there we go. All right, so you can go ahead and uh, we'll call this the first question. Oh, there we are. All right, go ahead and roll away. Ask away, Danny. First off, is Marco going to be dead by the end of the night? Mm. Four successes. Uh, Ty goes to the acting vampires. So uh, you, Chet, can tell that uh, the next statement that she says is true. Uh, Marco, we, we have plans for Marco. Marco was going to be dead by the end of the night, but now that I'm here and we are where we are at, I don't know what my followers are going to do with him. So this is a risky place for all of us to be right now. Also passed my rouse check. I've never done a ritual before. Didn't know I had to do that, but passed oh. it, so. Okay, you're good. You're good. Um, any so other? we have a little bit of time. Next question. How many followers are in that building? Okay. One, two, three, four. All right, I've got four successes on this roll here. Also four. Um, I'm rolling six. I'm doing really well. Uh, Chet, you um you can actually feel the the uh the vitae in the vessel starting to like heat up. Like there you you barely pulled this off and you're not sure how much longer you're going to be able to maintain this. Um There's there's six. Which is a true statement. Three of us, six of them. Should I make a call to the sheriff? I don't feel comfortable letting Elizabetta know yet. Uh, one, I mean, it's one up to you. Is... Do you think we can two, take two each? One, one fast thing. The storyteller should inform the caster if there is no more information about that topic. Oh. Uh, she's, she's... She hiding something? Uh, she, uh, as of right now, she is, uh, she honestly doesn't know things, okay. things are in flux as of right now. This is, she is telling you what she honestly believes to be the truth. And then she, like, are mm -hmm. the guards necessarily followers or hired muscle? Well, you want to ask that? No, I'm good. Okay. If the blood tells me it, it's mm -hmm. fine, then. Mm hmm Yeah, Chet, you think going off of the uh, the feeling here, you've probably got one. There's probably one more question before the uh, the ritual becomes uh, nullified. All right, third time's a charm. Make it a good one. Let's see here. I'm just twirling the sp I'm twirling the stake around, just staring at her, trying to think of something. Hmm. Any booby traps that we should know about? Are there booby traps in this church? No, they're not. There's 
there's not been enough time to set everything up. We've got plans, though. I've got two successes. Also two. <laughs> and wow. and as as those words come out of her out of her mouth, Chet, you you get the impression that she is lying, and then the blood becomes so hot to the touch, and it actually starts to smoke and boil off, um, that you have to remove your finger. Yep, yep, we're done. Pop it in. Well, so so uh, so Chet, you you do of course have to you know let the others know that she was lying. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was a lie. Uh, that place is definitely trapped in some way. <sighs> That's unfortunate. We've we've got there's. There's, 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 you know, the, the, the tripwire with the shotgun shells, those are, those are rigged by the main doors. Then there's also a deadfall that we have in the back that I, that one though, I'm not entirely sure we haven't gotten that to work. Correctly, I can tell you though that if anyone who comes through the front doors and they're not careful, they're gonna get a couple of pounds of buckshot right at their face. So, so do we stake her anyway? Chet, what you think? Chet, know what happens when you stake a thin blood? Uh, yes, Chet would know what happens when you stake a thin blood. Uh, you do know that there's, uh, there, there's no hard, consistent, uh, rule when it comes to thin bloods. It's a roll of the dice. If, uh, whether or not the stake is actually going to kill her or do what it would normally do to a regular kindred. Uh, I mean, it's gonna hurt like fuck. Either way, so. We can't, if she dies, we can't really trade her and she's tied up right now, so, uh. Fair enough. I trust yes. that you two know what you're Maybe. doing and that uh, not staking her is going to be our, to our benefit. Because I don't know. She's just pissing me off. For now. For now, it's to our benefit not to. Oh, I think we called this one in. Uh, yeah, I'm right. gonna get a hold. Of, I'm gonna get a hold of the sheriff here. Um, figure out if we need to set up a bargaining chi chip with uh, Katie here, um, or if we just burn down the whole fucking church. Either way, I'll be happy. We'll be in bed by uh, sunlight. We'll be good. Um, I'll make that call. Uh, you take out your cell phone and you call Sheriff Israel Jones of Sioux City here. Uh, it rings a few moments and. Eventually, he picks up. Uh, it is dead silent on the other side of the call. Uh, this means one of two things. He's either working or he is working. There's He's usually uh, got some sort of uh, some music playing in the background uh, whenever, whenever you seem to call him, even if he's out driving around. Uh, but his, uh, his voice is very sharp and to the point. Yeah. What, what do you got, Danny? Hey, I have the La Sombra. I have the, uh, I have the, uh, shadow guy state. He's in a spot of, uh, not moving right now. I have a bunch of kids that um seem to be running around dealing with these shadows um i have a kid right here that got in a lot of trouble and uh we are trying to figure out if we should move on that or see if you're available to help out on the situation where are you at right now uh parking garage two blocks south of uh st joe oh 
Um, I'm I'm actually at St. Valentine's right now. I'll I'll meet you there. Uh, do you are you in what what vehicle are you in? Are you in Chet's van? We're in Chet's van. All right. Yeah. Just I'll keep an eye out. Be right back. Be right there. And he hangs up. Go. This whole trying to keep the masquerade while on the phone thing is really fucking tiring, guys. I hate it. I think we need a code. Like, I think we need to make a code with the sheriff so that he knows what we're saying and we know what he's saying and we don't have to use things like words like thin bloods or kids. I'm assuming that's what you meant. Kids, thin bloods. That's what I was going with at the time, yeah. yeah. I mean, we have yeah. no system set up. This is a bad operation. Um you know, I usually just text him with a hey, honey bunny, and he knows that I'm talking to him, but that's, you know, there's just. He hates there's that. There's got to be some kind of system. <laughs> oh, I know he hates that. Yeah, we got to make a system so that, you know, we can actually talk. Because otherwise, you know, lines aren't secure, all that other crap or yeah. whatever they say in that tech world. Mm -hmm. And Chat, you're in a few secret systems. Um, how do you work them? Uh, I just say so, I, They just give me a place. I show up and we talk face to face. Makes sense. Or they yell at me, and I get back in the van. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so uh, it's just a few minutes later uh, that uh, Sheriff Jones's black Escalade. Uh, pulls into the parking garage. Uh, he does not have any music bumping in the back. Uh, he steps out. Uh, he is actually wearing um, a very sharp three-piece suit. Uh, you're you're not used to seeing your boss dressed to the nines like your typical Ventru. Uh, he's usually. Uh, We'll we'll say uh, uh, urban business casual when he's out and about, uh, but in in this sense, no, he he looks like he could be on the cover of GQ right now. Uh, but uh, like his shoes are probably like worth. I I. I I honestly would say probably a couple thousand dollars just right there. But uh, he gets out and uh, he doesn't seem to be escorted by anybody else. Uh, he's sitting around, looking around, making sure that there's no one, uh, no one nearby. And he goes up and uh, taps on the driver's side window of the uh, the the free candy van. Doesn't say that. <laughs> He, he covered over that with spray paint. Mm. <laughs> and he he gets back and he waits for you all to uh, exit the vehicle. You didn't have to get all dressed up for us now. I had... Yeah, boss. Looking snazzy. I... Looking snazzy. You have a hot date or something tonight? I... I, I have to babysit Jimenez. He's... Taking it upon himself to make my life a living hell right now. Uh, he's down at St. Valentine's talking with the Heartbreakers about something, actually. I don't know what, but I don't know. I, I let him know that I I let him know that I had to peel away. I don't know what he's got planned and you know, between now and sunrise, so Alright. What do you got? Okay. We got six thin blood sitting in a church of a, that's surrounded and booby trapped. We have a Marco staked in the middle of the thing. There's a ritual that's going on somewhere. We have a pastor Katie in the back that we just found out that she was lying to us on one time. She's very rude. Very, very rude. And um, we got to go get Marco. And I didn't know if you wanted to get a little blood on that nice three piece suit there. Wait, okay, hold on. Okay, Marco, you mean Marco Norteno from Chicago? Yes. Yep. Oh, this... God. Fucking Giovanni. This is what she wanted. God damn this it. This is what she wanted us to do. 
All right, all right. Now, hold on. Let's let let's reset this for just a second. All right. So when you say Pastor Katie, she oh, seems to be the leader of this thin blood group. Yeah. I hold on, and he goes open the back to show. Sure, mm -hmm. restrained there with a gag in her mm -hmm. mouth. Uh, he Close the door back. Uh, he he turns and he looks at you all. Oh, the, yeah, this is, uh, no, the, the, this is, this is Kate Brewster. She's a problem child. Open the door. <sighs> Liar. Close it. Okay. All right. Hold on. He takes out his, uh, his cell phone and he's, uh, he seems to be texting somebody. Are you, you're not getting a hold of Elizabeth, are you? Yes, I am, and I have my reasons why I need to be getting a hold of her right now. Um, what if she's responsible for this? She's not, but... Hold on. Oh, you want to open the door for the van again, please? And he walks over... Uh, you can hear the the hard soles of his shoes just clacking off of the concrete. And he's just kind of like standing, looming over her. Uh, you don't need to be a kindred to tell that there's something heavy and menacing just pouring out of Sheriff Jones right now. And she's trying to cower and curl up as far away from him as he as she possibly can. He stands there for a moment. Sighs. And he clambers into the back of the van. Uh, you see him reach out and he kind of grabs... Uh, grabs her by the collar of her, uh, uh, the, the Roman Catholic priest outfit that she kind of reappropriated from the, uh, from the sanctuary there from the church. And he just hauls her out of the back of the van. Um, if she was, um, actually like chained or tied off to any hard points there in the back of the van, those, you can hear the, hear those go ping as either the chain or the um, or the weld point breaks and he tosses her like a sack of potatoes up against the uh, the far wall of the parking garage which is it's actually a half wall um, to where you can see out uh, you guys are on like the th this is like a fit uh, a five floor parking garage and you're on like the third. Uh, some, uh, the city has, um, they, there is like a chain link fence though, uh, kind of outside on the, the outer ledge those just to prevent people from having mishaps like Patrick Katie just about did, but she impacts against the concrete half wall and she crumples to the floor. Uh, Sheriff Jones calmly, smoothly clack, clack, clack. Picks her up again. Look, I told you once already, I don't want you slinging that shit in my city. You obviously didn't hear me the first time. And he proceeds to just start slamming her into the chain link wall. Or the chain link fence. After about the sixth or seventh time, he tosses her again. She hits the the back of the van, slumps down again at your guys' feet. Okay, well, you all can go ahead and ask her whatever else you want to know about the place. I've got 
to go handle some shit with Elizabetta. The three of you keep your hands on her, keep an eye on her, toss her in a hole. I don't care, just so long as you know where she's at at all times. And hum- what about Marco? That's why I'm getting a hold of Elizabetta. So the three, the three of you take, take Katie here, and get her the hell out of the way. Uh, you need to reach Elizabetta. Chad, I've already got it. And yeah, I know you're working for her. I was gonna, I was gonna dial her on my phone. <laughs> No, I've I, I'm I'm gonna get a hold of her. You, uh, you, the three of you, you you've got a job to do. You're you're on babysitting detail until otherwise instructed. What is the job now, anyway? Is the job to say still save Marco or to let Marco rot in that church until sun or sunrise? He uh, he glares down at Katie. Uh, who seems to be on the verge of consciousness at this point in time. Uh, I don't know. Uh, The ball is in her flock's court right now. Uh, I do need to let Elizabetta know what happened to her uh, her, uh, golden egg here. keep in touch and he uh, goes and he gets in his Escalade and he uh, calmly and politely drives his vehicle out of the parking garage until he gets down to the street and then you hear a as he hauls ass going someplace I Katie is uh, just she's exactly where she was left uh the the will to resist her fight is completely gone. You can see, you can see her face. She's she's completely broken. Whatever Israel did to her, both uh, physically and uh, emotionally and mentally, she's uh, she she's done. Okay, Liza's gonna crouch down and just look at her and say, "So, what else do you want to tell us? Why did you want Marco in the first place?" Like, what good is Marco to you? He's... He's got... He's got strong blood, and he's got things that we need. We... we, We're not... not, We're not making a thin blood into a sombra, if that's what you've got in mind. Well, that's what I'm hoping you're not doing. Last thing you want is to have, like, you know, shadow tentacle shit coming out of your hands. No. You don't even know what you're doing? Yes. Yes. There's... I've I've got a a business that is running into a supply problem. Um, Chet, go ahead and roll Intelligence and Occult. Um, Danny and Liza, go ahead and you can roll intelligence and occult or intelligence and streetwise. Uh, I don't have a cult. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, we've, we've had yeah, this, none of us have we've had this discussion yeah. already, haven't we? Yes. Uh, he knows blood magic, but he doesn't have a cult. It's basically like, he has a cookbook. Yeah, Worst coterie step. ever. <laughs> Um, okay, so intelligence and streetwise across the board, then. Chet, you can add, um, a die to your pool. Okay, two, three, three, successes. two, three, and two. Um, all right, so Liza, you've heard rumors that there's, um, besides the, 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 the many... Uh, hocus potion, hocus pocus potions, 
that the Thin Bloods are known to to make and utilize. Uh, there is also um, a uh, a rumor that you've heard going around about how they've figured out a way to turn kindred ash into some kind of a street drug. Uh, Danny and Chet, you, you can probably make some sort of guess that there is a connection between Marco and whatever illicit, uh, business Katie has gotten, has gotten herself involved in, but you don't know what the connection could possibly be. So Eliza's going to relay what she knows to the rest of them, to Chet and to Danny. So what kind of shit do you do with ashes? Like, do, it, 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 you just stake them and they just, you know, you, what kind of bullshit is this, Kitty? Like, we've all, we've all got different ways of doing it. There's the, we, the, we, we drain them, but we don't actually like go all the way. And then uh, I, I do some stuff and so my, some other people in my group do some other things. And then we end up, it's called Ash. And, you know, the, the, the grapevine is that, you know, different, there's different ways to make this shit. It's just our way is what works for us. And Chet's if, fear, furiously taking notes. <laughs> if someone were to follow this recipe, would they also be able to make ash? Chet? I'm asking so I can find other people later doing it and stop them. And... Oh, sure. Sure, <laughs> Chet. Sure, Chet. Katie, uh, Katie's kind of given Chet um, a, a little bit more of a lingering glance, but you know as well as I do that you have to be a thin blood to get it to work. There are some perks of being a thin blood. Opens up his Arizona iced tea, takes a sip, and then just spits onto the floor. <laughs> Don't actually spit IRL, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, we're all about having a little fun here. But the we were gonna we were gonna cook Marco tonight. He's he's got some some things there. Ash Ash doesn't just let you have some of their power. It, you can get some of their memories too and with him he knows some things that we need to know and this was the only way that we could get him to talk like what what did he know that you needed to know come on Elizabetta has some business in Chicago that mm, I don't know what, but it's important and it involves us. And we need to stop it. So now you're the good guys? That's you and I both know that's that's a stretch. Does, does, does cooking him kill him? Yes. One would assume. Two birds with one stone. Kills. So what do you think would happen to you? Like, even if we didn't show up, what do you think would happen to you when Marco was found to no longer be, you know, of this world? And somebody else connected this back to you. That was a risk we were willing to take. And 
we're not the only ones involved with this situation and we're, we we don't have clean hands but ours are cleaner than others oh there's others okay come on yep yep give me more who are the others i've i i i i, I can't say anymore i'm already i'm already in too deep and how could uh, this get worse for you? Don't. No, we're we're done. Just wherever wherever you're gonna stash me, I'm done. I need a fucking lawyer. <laughs> you don't yes, get okay. How... We we've gone through this. We we've gone through this. There are no lawyers for our people. You you know that right? I mean, we've gone Mr. through. Mr. Danny before. Smiths, attorney at Kindred Law. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm trying. <laughs> no. You don't get a lawyer. You get a stake through the heart. That's what happens. You get a stake through the heart, you have a head chopped off, or, you know, you get thrown into a fire. You don't get a lawyer. So you can either talk to us, and maybe, you know, maybe we can actually try and get you out of town or some shit. Or you can wait until our boss shows up again, at which point he's probably not going to give you that same... Uh, that same chance of getting away but you know it's up to you i mean how long have you been alive 50 60 years i'm thin blood i'm i i, I don't have the, the the time under my belt that some of you do I'm, I've, yeah I'm, but you could live 50 or 60 years you could live longer but you're not going to you're just gonna die right here tonight if you don't tell us what we need to know, because our boss is going to come back eventually and he's not going to be happy that you're still here. Look, I, I don't know what exactly is going on. All I know is that Elisabetta is in bad with some bad people like any Giovanni would be. And yes, I'm a thin blood and a, I even know of their reputation, but. It involves Chicago, and it involves some kindred here, and there's a vested interest that this stays quiet on both sides of the fence in both cities. So I, 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 I can only tell you what I know, and I don't know enough to really be of much help other than... Elizabeth is in some shit and it involves some high placed kindred here in Sioux City and Chicago. And I'm just All right. looking for a piece of the action, just like anybody else would be. Liza is just giving out like a, like if she were able to sigh, if she was able to still breathe, she'd be doing that and she'd be rolling the eyes back into the back of her head. Uh, All right, Danny, Chet, what do you think we should do? Well, first things first. Good night, Katie. And a pistol with her. Go ahead and give me a uh, give me a strength in melee. Four. Oh, uh, on top of the ass whooping that she's already taken uh, from Sheriff Israel. That was uh, that was enough, uh, and in fact, it looks like uh, she was actually starting uh, starting to heal up some of uh, what Israel had done to her, and then bonk, she is out like a light. Into sleep. So you now have this uh, this incapacitated thin blood on your hands. And Hi. it is current. How it is in torpor? I'm assuming. Uh, she's unconscious. Okay. She's unconscious. Whether or not she's in torpor or not, eh. Yeah, we don't. We that... don't know what a stake will do, and I don't know if we need to kill her just yet. Um. I don't. Who wants to keep her? Uh, I I just handled transit. I don't stash them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She's in with some bad shit. It might be 
a good idea just to get her out of here after we get this whole Marco thing cleared up. Also, I'm not really very keen on being stuck in the middle of this whole Chicago and freaking Elizabetta doing bullshit and pulling strings with our sheriff. Like, it's all just fucking bullshit. It is. It's. I want to fuck their shit. Like, I honestly, I'm so sick of their shit. Let's just, like, let's get Marco. Maybe, I, I don't know, if you guys are okay with it, maybe we get Katie the hell out of here. I don't know, drop her off at the nearest train station or some shit. Well, it's, uh... We gotta do it tomorrow, then. It's like, yeah, we'd have to now. do it tomorrow. We're getting we're getting late into the into the uh, yeah. evening here. Yeah, but so unless we can, I don't know. Important question. Did we check her for a phone? <laughs> Check it for a phone. We can see who she's been texting and talking to. Uh, she does have a phone. Oh yeah, she's been does talking it? to us. Remember. However, when you go and you check her phone, it is bricked. This is what happens when you wrestle with La Sombra. Oh, I assume the sheriff did it. No. Wait, how did she text us? Who texted us back when we used the dead guy's phone? Storyteller fuck Magic. up. Storyteller fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that is, it's, it's, it's been, it's been a couple of months, damn it. My, yeah, yeah it's been a couple of months. Um, so let, let's retcon that. Let's retcon it's that. It's been smashed when the sheriff beat the piss out of it. That her. works. That works. Just because I don't have that particular piece of info prepped. So we're... Thank you very much, Chet. <laughs> no, the, the her yeah, her her phone is her phone is trashed. Her so, phone is trashed. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> fine. Um uh wallet. Uh her wallet, you uh she does have an ID. Uh her her wallet, uh the ID the, the wonderful thing about Thin Bloods is you can keep on living a normal mortal life if you've been, if you've gotten lucky. Uh, sh her current age, uh, she, she looks young for 38, but not unreasonably young. Uh, you could even, you could say that she was just, be uh, just blessed with a baby face. Some people are like that. Um, so yeah, she looks she looks young for thirty eight. Uh, she has um, a Wells Fargo debit card. Uh, she's got a Visa and a Mastercard credit card. Uh, she's got um, a couple of twenties. The 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 usual normal mortal detritus that you accumulate in a wallet or purse is what she's basically got. Not, nothing nothing too out of the out of the ordinary other than oh yeah she's she looks good for 38 well I guess wait a second Chet thin bloods can wake up during the day can't they some of them shit I don't want her in my place of rest just to have her wake up me at neither. 2 in the afternoon me neither Chet, you got I mean, a shovel in this van? I mean, I suppose if she's tied up or something like that, we've got her somewhere where she can't get out. But then we have to leave her with food or something, because I assume that if she can wake up during the day, can she eat too? Or Oh, she could starve. You, you can eat, but I think as long as you have blood. I don't know. I've never starved. So. Uh, I've got something for y'all for this here. Uh, why don't you all give me a wits in politics or a wits in streetwise? Whatever one of those two is higher for you. Four for Chet. <laughs> one. One for Liza, One. six for Danny. Is that a, a, a the? Is that just the normal six successes there, Danny? I said normal six successes. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Chet and Danny, you both know that. Oh wait a minute, Sheriff Jones was just talking with the Heartbreakers at their place. 
they've got a basement with holding cells, don't they? Hmm. I got it. Chat to the van. We're <laughs> heading to... <laughs> We're so, just standing next to it. So, uh, yeah. a, a, an out of character note, and also for for Chet and Liza in the main Sioux City by Night game way back when, uh, the coterie there uh, has a uh, they have a uh, combination. Well, it's like the 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 bottom level is a whiskey and cigar lounge. And the upper upper floors are apartments. Uh, the downtown Sioux City, the architecture, uh, a lot of it came to be in the like the Art Deco period. So there's there's a weird mishmash of Art Deco and neo Roman uh, buildings downtown. It, it's it's weird and goofy looking. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's it, it's it's yeah. Uh, but uh, so the 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 heartbreakers have. Uh, I think we said what the building's ten stories tall. I think is what yeah, we settled so. on. Um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, gentrification has definitely taken its toll in the historic district of Sioux City. Um, but. Yeah, so the uh, the other coterie would be more than ha or they they have the resources to uh, to stash her and just to uncomplicate matters. I'm not going to play any of that that actual exchange out. Um, but uh, we can uh, we can say that uh, the three of you do manage to work out an arrangement with with the other group. Uh, to to stash Katie down in their uh, down in their their uh, their holding cell area, um, and it is getting to be about that time of the day here uh, where you will all have to start thinking about where you're gonna spend your day sleep. So, uh, Chet, are you gonna be taking them back to the uh, the little uh Israel's office there kind of by the airport. Yeah. Okay. Uh so the three of you stop there. Uh you do not see Israel's Escalade parked here. So he's either still out working or he went home to or went to his haven. He didn't stop back into the office. Hmm. So if there's any any last any any last uh, things here that you wanted to discuss before sunrise. Now would be the opportunity to get it in. First things first, we meet back at the Heartbreakers and we pick up Katie. Second, we get a hold of the sheriff and find out what's going on. And then we have to make our decisions from there. Ultimately... Agreed. Chet... I know she's your boss or your second boss or your third boss or your fourth boss. I don't care, but she can't know where Katie is. Right. I mean, the job isn't for her. Nope. Yep. Got it. Uh, <laughs> I love, I love having the, uh, the split loyalty here with Chet. It's great shit. Right. <laughs> right. Chet. As I said, don't care. Fourth, fifth, seventh boss. I don't care. But if Katie is found, I'm going to be a little bit pissed off at you. And you know I like you, Chet, but I'll be a little pissed off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the three of you, the three of you uh go your separate ways. Uh Danny, where uh what what's Danny's Haven like? Danny's Haven is going to be in a studio apartment um not fully downtown but in where the hustle and bustle is it's like a studio apartment next to a fire station where there's just a lot of noise and chaos that goes on mm -hmm. um it's the complete opposite of what a normal gangrel would like in their uh in their haven but uh you know he just goes in he'll uh grab a little bag of 
blood and slurp on it and find his way to to his bed. Okay. And uh, what's Chet's Haven like? Uh, it's on the cheap part of town. It is a studio. And uh, it's got, it's like a, like a, like a, a terminal, like a terminal bachelor pad. It's got like full, it's got like beach chairs and like trash pick things. Uh, he's got posters he thinks are cool, but th- they don't make him look mature at all. <laughs> Three black light posters, no black lights. Ooh, like big red, like sports car, like poster on the wall. I love that. I love that. I'm a Banu Hakeem. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's Liza's what's Liza's haven like? Uh well Liza lives on the kind of cheaper in the cheaper part of town. Um she lives above a martial arts studio. Um she basically her place is pretty sparse. She's got a few, you know, photos here and there. She's got a bed. It's not too soft, not too hard. Uh her walls are pretty blank but she's got like various swords and things like that all over her walls um and she's got a kind of a cabinet in the in the one corner that has just like if you were to open it up it just has rows upon rows upon rows of swords more swords (laughs) um and she's got a pair of boxing gloves kind of just lying haphazardly on the ground and uh if you're kind of look at the back of her apartment you'd notice that it's kind of like the wall doesn't quite look right and if you had kind of a uh a sense the unseen or a heightened senses you'd notice that the panel of that of that uh or sorry the uh that wall is actually a panel that kind of slides open and it has a little staircase that goes into the studio into the martial arts studio so that she can kind of train when all the classes are done and doesn't have to go around the front um so yeah and and that's about it that's her her studio is pretty sparse otherwise important question are there more swords in the martial arts place no the martial (laughs) arts place is all hand-to-hand combat hand-to-hand uh and foot combat it's actually a taekwondo studio so uh yeah she'd be doing basically her swords are are up for upstairs um basically the the hand and foot uh weapons are in the downstairs i love that so uh the so the sun rises uh you you all uh all three of you enter the the corpse-like state of the day sleep chet it, it's still even now it still takes some getting used to uh but the the city progresses and I have some dice rolls that I need to make here. Give me a moment. Add a character storyteller's note. All of my games, I always have some sort of a background simulation running. There's always things moving and it's uh, whatever, whatever the coterie does or does not do impacts those things that are happening in the background. And last one. Okay, excellent. So the sun sets and the three of you all rise uh respective of your uh, humanity your humanity ratings um seven as soon as the sun is below the horizon you're up uh anything higher you maybe get up a little a couple of minutes early anything later uh you know adjust accordingly depending on how much of a how much of a beast you actually are but uh Danny and Liza uh the two of you will have texts on your phone from Israel 
uh, those texts, uh, and actually, Chet, you'll get this one as well. Uh, all three of you, or all three of you, the text states, "Button up and keep an eye on her." Uh, Chet, you also get a text from uh, boss number two in your phone that simply asks, "Where is she?" And here is where we will take a break. <laughs> so everyone, go ahead, refresh, take some time. Uh, we will uh, we'll be back in uh, since since Joe's here, Joe. I know you like the seven minute intermission, so that's what we'll stick with uh, for here. I don't care. The extra the extra take as long <laughs> as you need to hydrate. You can, uh, the extra two minutes is vital uh, when it comes to certain things here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, yes, seven minutes, and we will be back soon. Hi, and welcome back. Uh, I'm Patrick from Martlet Games. This is the wonderful cast. And we are going to jump back into our one shot, Twisting Ashes. Uh, just as a friendly reminder, this is a graphic show that is about vampires. You are going to see and hear things that are possibly of, uh, uh, we'll say questionable content, viewer discretion is advised, etc., etc. So, uh, Sunset has found the Coterie. Uh, all three of them have received a text message from their boss, Sheriff Israel Jones. Uh telling them basically to, to button up and uh, shelter in place or whatever they need to do to keep an eye on uh, keep an eye on their their guest um, and Chet has also gotten a text from another one of his bosses uh, asking where their guest currently is so we're gonna go ahead and pivot right over to Chet since he's in the hot seat here uh, Chet, uh, how are you going to respond to that, uh, to that text? Ooh. Ooh. Uh. She's in good hands, Seth. <laughs> you get a, you get a response later. Uh, right on the heels of that. That's not what I meant. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do it like do my wife sends a message like that. I'm just going to ignore it. <laughs> oh, shit. She gets a ghost after me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit, do I have war against ghosts? <laughs> I don't know if you do or not. Um, I do not. <laughs> uh oh. So, anyways, we'll 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 get back to that uh, later. Uh, so that that bit of business out of the way. Uh, what was the uh, the agenda here going forward? What were you all going to want to do? Well, we already got the text from the sheriff. Mm -hmm. um, it's looking like Marco and Katie are the two things. Um, let's I'm gonna send out a text. Uh, meet sad heartbreakers. Okay, and the 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 two of you would know. Uh, the building well enough. Uh, you, the three of you, don't really interact with them directly, uh, just because they are a uh, they're they're sort of the the, the prince's uh, pet project uh, in a way, and they're they're very much hands off from the uh, the the lower ranks of the. Uh, we'll say the the city's uh, political structure. Uh, that being said, 
uh, you know, things things do uh, things are handled primarily through their ghoul Zeke. Uh, Zeke is a, uh, he, he appears to be middle-aged. He's a little on the, uh, like, he, he maybe started to let himself go a little bit, uh, before he was ghouled. Um, but the, uh, that's who you will, or that's who you were dealing with to make the arrangements and who you will be dealing with going forward. Uh, just because, yeah, that, that, that's, Steve's on that cast as well. So yeah, <laughs> I ain't doing that side by side stuff. No, and I and I don't want to. I don't want to interfere with what I've got currently planned and what's currently going on in the background while that's getting up and running. So, uh, but the three of you, you do um, in your own time, uh, make your way into the uh, the parking lot back behind the building. Uh, the you do not see anyone uh, really out there to greet you. Uh, judging by the the business, it's a fairly busy night downtown in general. Uh, it's not the weekend per se, but there's always little cultural things going on that always attract the. Uh, uh, we'll say the uh, the the stable middle class out to spend some disposable income but uh so the three of you have uh, you do have the parking lot to yourselves while you are waiting for some sort of uh sign of action from the heartbreakers well i'm thinking since we need to hunker down there's some stuff going on with katie yes yes Elizabetta is very interested in where she is. And I'm really hoping that this keeps me safe. Uh, um, it should. It's the exact same one that Dominic Toretto wears. I'm telling you right now, you bring any of that hocus pocus water out, I'm going to beat your ass. Chad, oh, I've got to say, you, you told Elizabetta that you you didn't know where she was like or something like that like that's that's honorable thanks i deflected and then my phone's been vibrating ever since i i got in the car you know you can take it off vibrate right i mean i don't much know much about cell phones but i'm pretty sure you can take it off vibrate yeah but then my like i feel it on my leg even when it doesn't do it i don't know also oh. i don't know if my Phantom car is low jack i probably should have thought of that yeah you know, okay, so, you know, maybe we don't take the car to wherever. We should take going. the car away from here. However, yes. I do feel comfortable with Katie in the basement because then it's the heartbreaker's problem and not our problem if the place gets leveled. Well, you know what? If I mean, what do we need Kitty for right now? I mean, we could go get Marco or whatever, like, do think, our thing. I think we go get Marco and find out some answers from him. Yeah. And um, we keep Katie here. And uh, uh, Chet, let's move that fucking van. Um, <laughs> let's park it. Uh, uh, let's see here. Do you have a friend that can drive the vehicle around the town? Does Chet have a friend? Also, I have to apologize. There apparently is a cricket in my basement. If that comes through, okay. We don't care. Beautiful. We don't care around here. (laughs) I I have a three dot contact. I guess I could say that's my buddy. Yeah, that'll work. I know a guy. You know a guy. (laughs) And yeah, we're we we yeah we'll we won't play that out you're yeah that that's easily arranged that can be done so we don't have the cool cover of the van sorry chet but uh at least that will keep them moving around they'll probably stop here but uh i have to pay for repairs on this thing so (laughs) well we'll uh we'll make sure that everything's set on that and let them drive around Mm. let's get a car Let's go check out Marco. Okay. Um, Zeke does come out the back. 
uh, before you all are getting ready to head out there. Uh, but with Zeke here, uh, he's he's wearing a uh, mm, say a, ni a nice pair of slacks and a uh, mm, we'll say a nice polo. Um, you know, relatively, relatively, uh, business casual. Uh, so, uh, everything is going fine with our guests? Yes. Uh, yes, we'll come back. Um, I just want to make sure that she's still here from the, uh, from the day. She hasn't taken off, I assume, correct? Uh, no, she's, she's fine. Uh, we've been making sure that she's being taken care of she's she hasn't left the basement but she's okay. she, she's uh we're you know she she's actually eating normal human food which helps us significantly so i uh, you know little caesars keeps her um it it, it it it's easier on our budget ah uh, yes pizza pizza mm -hmm. um yep Oh, I missed the five dollar hot and ready's. <laughs> but with with her, no, the the things they'll be fine. Um, okay. Just just uh, my my employers wanted to let you know that they do um, intend on billing you for uh, the tenancy rates while we while we keep her here. Uh, however, that can, uh, we'll, we'll arrange everything with, uh, with Sheriff Jones and if necessary, uh, um, Prince Jimenez as well. I understand. We'll just Let's... make sure she's not getting the sweet. Oh, no, she's, uh, she, she is behind, uh, cinder block and three wrought iron bar walls. She's not going anywhere. What would, All like, right. the Motel 6 rate look like, though? The, we 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 charge less than Motel Six. All right. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It, I mean, the prince doesn't necessarily need to know about this. I mean, it's not like we're keeping it from him, but I'm sure the sheriff can take care of it on its own. I mean, just put it on the sheriff's tab. He's already agreed to us. Understood. Understood. Um, and I'm uh, out of character. I'm just now seeing your uh, the text that you had sent to uh, Elisabetta there, Chet. Uh, was that before or after? It was before. It was before he left. While um, uh, understood. We were talking to her. Okay. Just... That that does not change any yeah. bearing in what happened. So. We're, it was just, oh, the sheriff is mad mm -hmm. as he was driving off. <laughs> so, so that that does not change the uh, that does not change the uh, the bearing of the circumstances here. But, um, anyways, so uh, the the coterie has made the arrangement with Zeke uh, that the the heartbreakers will be keeping an eye on Pastor Katie. And Chet, his uh, his uh, un undeterminate contact came and scooped up the circulatory system van that he's been tooling around in. Uh, now, as far as obtaining another vehicle, that's easily done. Uh, you all could definitely. Uh, catch an Uber back to uh, Jones's office area. Uh, he does keep some some spare vehicles on hand. Uh, so if that's where if if that's agreeable with the coterie, uh, we can go with that. Unless you have an idea there, Danny. Uh, I was thinking about keeping the sheriff out of this. Oh, okay. Well, uh, what do you what what's your uh, what's your agenda here? I'm thinking we're going because he told us to hunker down. So yeah. we're already breaking that rule. Mm -hmm. um, I thought we were just going to St. Joe's and try to get Marco. I think so too. Okay. All right. The... I think okay. a little larceny if anyone has it. I've got some I don't. larceny and. Out of character. I have larceny. We're good. 
Also, before the van drives off, could I make a preparation for cleaning of the insect to use later tonight? Yep, go right ahead. Awesome. And yeah, there we won't. Yeah, we won't require any rolls. I'll just say boop boop. Yeah, you're good. Well, awesome. other other than the rouse, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, mm-hmm. rouse passed. Okay. All right. Um. So from there. Uh, okay, we're going to St. Joe's. So the uh, the neighborhood compared to the night before, uh, nothing has really changed on the surface, but you there is a a sense of uh, uh, we'll we'll say negative pressure like the neighborhood itself just does not want you here uh the there's little to no traffic there's little to no normal like pedestrian foot traffic in this neighborhood anyway this time of night uh but you get the sense that even the insects have left it is dead silent. Uh, you, other than the uh, the the buzz and the hum of the old orange uh, arc sodium street lamps that are still in the neighborhood. Yes, it was like a encampment, or I might be remembering as like an open air drug market across the street, in you know, like a field from the church. All right, say say that again. Wasn't there like? Like, a, like, a, like an encampment of some kind, like a field across from the church. I uh, know that, that was the. It's a parking lot. Okay. Yeah, it's a it, it's a parking lot, and there's uh there there is like an elementary school, um, it, it like we'll say a block and a half kind of north of there. Uh, so any anyone who wants to look up the neighborhood on Street View or whatever can see that the uh, St. Joseph's Church there is a, a grassy like you know, playground area out there. Um, but yeah, as IRL, there is a parking lot. Um, but that's kind of where, uh, that's where you all were kind of set up last night or the, yeah, the, yeah, the night before. Okay. Um, does that, does that clarify? We good? Yeah. I just thought I remembered something from last time. Nope. Nope. You're fine. Um, so, uh, how are you uh, all wanting? To- yeah, go ahead. Turning on uh, active heightened se- or not heightened senses, uh, sense, sense the, the unseen. unseen. So I have just burned a willpower because my role was shite. Uh, okay. So resolve and aspects. Um, <laughs> still shite. Two. Two. Okay. So that was a waste of willpower, but no, no you're fine. Uh. You you open up your senses to the spirit world. Uh, it's you you always kind of equate it like not being able to see through like a cheesecloth scrim over a camera, but then you eventually are able to just kind of push through it. But uh, the. The neighborhood is a mishmash of old buildings. You actually do uh, the. There's an old sense of history in this neighborhood, and you actually can see some of the ghostly remnants of some of the old buildings that used to be in the uh, neighborhood, um, including an old. Uh, there's an old uh, three-story stone elementary school that used to be actually right across the street that is no longer there but you get the the faint reminiscent of it there actually still being in place uh not a lot of uh we'll say active wraithly presence uh you do see the occasional like blip of um we'll say like an odd repeater or something like that but nothing nothing that really stands out uh you do not see any nosferatu if that's what you're looking for uh, nos or anything else hidden no nos no la sombra okay um, <laughs> uh no no <laughs> um anything else we good um 
I think we're good on the parking. I am... Uh, now, were you all going to park in the parking lot, or were you going to uh, maybe approach this indirectly as Joe struggles with her autofocus? <laughs> Um, either way, uh, we don't have to park in the parking lot if we don't need to. Uh, we can park at block down if it makes everybody feel safe. Um, I'm going to go and check the inside one more time, make sure they haven't just ashed this guy already and making our lives. Real fast. Uh, are we using guns or no? Uh, bring a gun just in case. <laughs> I've got knives beautiful um if you start hearing bangs come and get me remember the booby traps yeah i will try to come back to you if you if i come back then we'll go in as a group and come up with a plan of action but if you hear bangs that means something has happened and i am in deep shit okay I'm going more out of focus instead of less out of focus. So, <laughs> yeah, you look like a floating a like, like neck up. Terrifying. <laughs> You're okay. Yeah, no. Okay, I'm just gonna pretend I'm a little sombra. Yeah, I'm just gonna pretend I'm a little sombra right now. <laughs> You're fine, and I'm I'm gonna leave this in just because it's I love it. <laughs> Hilarious. I'm sorry. You're okay. <laughs> You're fine. So, um, any who's, uh, and just, just, just because, I mean, Danny's going to be kind of the, the focus here for a minute right now anyway. So, uh, Danny, how are you going to go about doing this here? Uh, we're going to mist form. Okay. Um, are you, uh, are you doing gonna this? going to do the same thing. Uh, quick or slow? We're going to go slow. We got time. Okay. So... Let me roll my rounds. Yep, go ahead. That is a fail. Hungary. Hunger. Mm, yeah. Okay. And, and as you as you trans as you start the transformation, you maybe start to feel like mm, I need to run. I need to go. I need to rip. I need to bite. I need to chew and tear and drink. <sighs> Be cool. Be cool, Danny. Be cool. <laughs> and I will uh I will mist and I will do the same thing. I'll go through the back. Okay. I'll enter through um underneath the door. Um and go where I last was able to see uh Marco and the crew. Okay. All right, so as you are misting over towards the the building, uh just immediately, you can see that the front doors of the church have... It looks like they've been kicked open and left open. Um, there's a, uh, a faint... Or there's there's a, uh, a yellow ribbon... Or a yellow police tape ribbon kind of fluttering in the wind as well. That was kind of tied off to one of the handles of the door. Um, if you wanted to miss through the front doors, you definitely could if you wanted to. It's open. I might as well mm -hmm. take it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you miss through and you can see that uh, the, the, uh, the night before the police was, you know, in disrepair, but it was still in somewhat, you know, orderly shape. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's the exact opposite. You can see where there's been some pews that have been actually broken and smashed. Um, you can see that there appears to be bullet holes in some of the, uh, the stone pillars inside the building. Some of the, some of the masonry work. Um, the altar that you saw Marco at previously, uh, has been, uh, basically stripped bare. 
down to the down to the the, the wooden table and there's lots of blood around it but there's no ash no other signs of any other struggle fuck um i'm gonna look to uh see if there's any basements or anything that i can get into at the time um give the church a good search okay real quick all right so the the church basement uh the the parish hall is actually in the basement of the church uh so it's a it's a large uh cafeteria style area there's a kitchenette uh bathrooms the there's the f if you were to uh, actually smell the air, there's that that permanent scent of like coffee that just kind of like gets baked into a place, uh, and just you know nothing foo foo that you get at Starbucks, just straight black coffee in bulk. Um, you can see where down here it looks like there were uh, sections that had been partitioned off using uh you know quilts or towels or sheets uh almost giving everyone their own private living space down here from the looks of it there's you know random you know cots and you know twin size mattresses just laying on the floor uh you know there's used uh or you know to go bags and to go and carry out containers scattered around the place. Uh, n not a lot of uh, other signs of current inhabitants, though. It's dark. There's the place is dead. Okay. Whatever happened up above did not carry on down into the basement from the looks of it, though. Okay. Well, I will mist myself back to the uh, wherever we're staying, the vehicle, mm -hmm. and uh, reform. Uh, somebody's already got here before us. What do you mean by that? I didn't tell uh, anyone shit. Are they all gone? Or uh, I think. Where Marco was once, there's a pile of blood. There's no ash. Um, there's nothing that happened to the basement. So whatever happened up front happened real quick. Um, everything's kicked inward. So something came in. And I don't think a lot of people made it out. Um, there were no bodies. Yeah, there's no bodies anywhere. But uh, somebody, somebody was shocking all of this place. Um, we might want to go back to the Heartbreakers because if they've gone here, then the next spot's probably there. Crap. Uh, yeah, let's go. Uh, Chet, yeah, have you, uh, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Chet, have you been ignoring your phone this whole time? Yeah, I think okay. Chet was just passing time by filling in, uh, just explaining the plot of movies that uh, she has seen to her. But with his own take on them. Okay. Ah, ah. Okay. Yes. Also, and explaining the plot of movies that she's never seen, but it's just like uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, because she so, hasn't seen so a lot of movies. It's the sequel to Transformers Two. Okay. Oh. Right. Yeah, that one. That one. Was that yeah. was that the one with the unnecessarily long or er, a long complicated explanation about the the age difference between the. I, I, well, that was in one of the Transformers movies. I'm sorry, aside, <laughs> but I just remember. I just remembered one of those trends. I, I haven't seen a single one of those damn things, so I'm okay. just I'm just leaving it at that. But uh, so, all right, uh, you've been stonewalling Elizabetta. I just I just wanted to to make that point very clear. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to. Okay. All right. How mad is she at me? She is oh she, she's incredibly pissed off. And in just fact pass the phone over. 
and and in fact, uh, I'm gonna look through the checks. And, and uh, basically, the only thing that Elizabetta has been sending here in response over the past ten minutes is "Get here now." Um. So I guess if you don't get there now, she's just gonna keep sending texts. Or she'll send ghosts after us. You. Uh, Damn it. Uh, shit. Yeah. Shit so is right. The only way that we could find out what happened to the church is probably to get a hold of the sheriff who told us to stay hungered down. Um... So but you'll know can... that we're already out. Nope, nope, nope. We could we could pretend that we don't know what's happened and just ask him if we should go and get Marco. Ooh. We could do that. That's that could move. work. Just I've used play that move stupid. Before. Let's do that right? and let's head back to the Heartbreakers because that's where we decided we were going to hunker down as a group. Uh, True. I want to text back. It was about a yeah, um, I would like to, but I'm also very scared of you, and Peter specifically, your doorman. <laughs> you get a you get a text back. If you're scared of me now, wait another fifteen minutes. If you don't show up, what if I'm more than fifteen minutes away? You do not get a response back. Uh oh. <laughs> well, decision time, Chet. I mean, you could just throw away your phone. Again, the ghost. Thing. Isn't that how that works? I don't think I the can... ghost tracks the cell signal, but no. I don't but know I think much she about knows. Computers. Or ghosts. Yeah. Uh, remember that movie that you told me about? Didn't they, like, take the phone and, like, pull it, something out of it and, like, smash their heel on it? Isn't that what you told me? And then nobody was able to find them or something? I think that's pretty cool. Can we do that? That's not how ghosts work. <laughs> 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 Just want to yeah, point that out. Seth Rogen didn't want to get in the dumpster. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, how, how, how are we gonna, how are we gonna proceed here? <laughs> now, now that I've set you set set this up for you all, how how are you all going to handle this? <laughs> I have done nothing wrong. Liza <laughs> well, still has, I assume, since the unseen up or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should I roll again and see if I can actually do better with this so I can see whatever wraiths she's throwing at us, or is that going to be enough? It, it, it's uh, there's I, I will be nice and tell you that there's currently nothing new going on in the background, so don't, uh, right. don't yeah, don't, don't, I, I'll be nice. Don't waste the, don't waste your, don't waste your time. <laughs> All right. So, um, so are we, uh, are we going to go back to the Heartbreakers, at least for now? Three what options, folks. Split up. <laughs> I'm down with splitting the party. If y'all want to split the party, I'm down. Out of Since... character, the way he just said that, I don't know if we want to split the party. <laughs> well, he doesn't want you guys to get hurt if they're just going to kill us if we all go. Trying to find a way to make this work for us. Mm hmm we got 15 minutes to figure it out. That, that implies we're driving there. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you might be already fucked. I'm just yeah, throwing I it out there. <laughs> GPS. I'm GPS and where the red room is. Uh, See the, how far that is. Well, the, the red room won't be publicly listed. Uh, or the, we I'll, the or day, have though. a pin. I'll have yeah. a pin or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, you, you can get to the... You, you can get to either the Heartbreakers or the Red Room. You cannot do both in 15 minutes. So, Can they Chet, get me in fleetness range and I can just run there? 
Chet, why don't you just go and deal with her and just lie as much as you need to to her and we can deal with our friend Katie. I don't know. What do you think, Danny? You know, I think oh, we almost might want to go see Elisabetta for the simple fact that if she's there with us, she's not looking for Katie. Yeah, but that doesn't mean all of her minions aren't looking for Katie. Again, right, then it's the heart. Yeah, Chet. Listen, listen. And, and again, We're paying the heartbreakers a Motel 6 rate, right? That's quality. That's a name brand you can trust. Um, I mean, Chet, why don't you go ahead and give me a <laughs> give me a composure and etiquette roll? Rolling two Ooh. dice. <laughs> I rolled two ones. That is a bestial failure. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. All how, right. how are the dice making him this dumb? I'm not. I, okay, I you I requested you to make the roll. I mm-hmm. did not. At, you were not actually attempting to do anything. Mm-hmm. I asked you to make the roll just to help give you some character context. So here's how we're going to play this out. Okay. You are going into a mental panic right now okay uh because you know for a fact that there is no good way that you personally can play this you are either gonna have to deal with pissing off sheriff jones or you're gonna have to deal with pissing off elizabetta uh you know that both are capable of making your the rest of whatever remains of your unlife a living hell. Um, how that that being said, you know that uh, Elizabetta still unfortunately has to abide by the terms of the uh, the agreement between the Hakata and the Camarilla. Non-interference. So, you do have that to take into consideration. I also figure that she won't get my back when the sheriff comes after me. Exactly. Or as the sheriff might do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, Money. yep, the, the, the terms of the promise, uh, the, that's the name of the agreement for those of you playing the home game, the terms of the promise between the uh, Hakata and the Camarilla, uh, yeah, there's, Elizabetta can only do so much, but what she can do is significant. And by the way, you take one willpower damage. That's fair. <laughs> because this is stressful. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so there we are. So there, there's some more context for for the, for the decision that y'all have to make. I have no problem going to the Heartbreakers. Again, it has to do with you, Chet, at this point in time. Yeah, I mean... We like you and all, chat, but you got yourself into this shit. This shit came and... to me. <laughs> I what did I do to this? Stuff? <laughs> you bit a Banu Hakim. <laughs> oh, I drank a Banu Hakim. Yeah, and then you went and started working for Lizabetta. So. Daddy, what do you oh, want to do? I'm sorry. Are, are those of us with clans that don't care about them supposed to, supposed to just go just live in dirt? Come on. Look, chat, we care about you. We'll protect you. But there's only so much we can do. We want, like, at least I want, just to get this goddamn job over with. Get everybody back where they're supposed to be. Let everybody live, what is it, happily ever after or some shit like that. Um... And 
you're gonna have to figure out Elizabetta. We can't help you figure out Elizabetta. All right, drop me off there. <laughs> okay. So nice knowing you, Chet. Mm-hmm. So the uh, the van, or uh, not? You're not in the van. the The vehicle pulls up into uh, up by the red room. Uh, there at the door, as always, is Peter. Uh, the place appears to be deserted. So, uh, oh no! And now, now it's early. In the grand scheme of things, but there's usually some extra staff vehicles around. But the place that you can see, uh, just three vehicles. One of them, uh, Chet, you know to be Elizabeth's personal vehicle, uh, and she she herself doesn't drive anybody or doesn't doesn't drive. Uh, she has uh, her. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll call him a uh, family acquaintance employer or employee, Michael do her driving for her. Um, there's Peter's personal vehicle. Uh, and then there is a, uh, a vehicle that just screams rental car. It, it, like it's you know like weird like the license plates from like Idaho, but other than that, that's it. Okay. Uh, before I get out of the car, I'm gonna take my cleaning of the insect uh, potion real fast. I pass that rose check. Mm -hmm. Come on. One success. Does that work? Yeah, it'll be nice. You're good. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, uh are you uh are you are you popping that before you, you you're taking that before you get out of the vehicle. Yeah? Yeah. Alright. So the two of you see him, you know, do his do his thing and Chet steps out. Um are the two of you immediately gonna head to the Heartbreakers or are you gonna hang around? Hmm. Um, what do you think? Out of character, what do you think? I mean, I scream out the window, Chet, you got 15 minutes. If you're not back out, we'll have to make our decision to get out of here or uh, come and get you. We'll see which one we, we should, decide in 15. We probably get out of here. We'll do that then. Have a good one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Bye, Chet. Okay. All right, so... Uh, we will go ahead and we'll we'll just dive into Chet. All right. Uh, so, Chet, you uh, you make your way uh, across the parking lot, and Peter's standing gruffly out front. And he's he he always seems to find a way to just tower over you, even if you're having a real good day. Peter's always found a way to just me. Mm. Make you feel like shit, even though you're technically higher up on the food chain than he is. Not anymore. But he he just kind of mm -hmm. does the the head wave to gesture you in. Uh, the inside uh, the the place appears to be like it's you know a, a normal night. Uh, you know the house lights are not on. It's still the 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 low uh, mood lighting. Uh, the music playing it's uh definitely more uh, more uh like witch house more ethereal trancy uh uh up at the bar you see elizabetta and uh a unknown male never seen this guy before in your life uh, he is uh, dressed in a uh, crumpled, wrinkled business suit. Uh, something about him just screams Ventru, though. He, he just, he just, you, you've got him. He, he's kindred, 
and he looks like a Ventru. Uh, but Elisabetta, she sees you come in, and she you know leans in you. Uh, she's making, uh, or she's trying to talk quietly to her companion. Uh, the both of them stand up. And Elisabetta gestures for you to come over. Uh, she's got her, uh, she's got a, a professional, you know, business smile screwed onto her face. Oh, hello there, uh, hello there, Chet. Uh, how how nice of you to stop in. Yes. And, yes, of course. And uh, allow me to introduce you to my business associate. This is Vincent Amara. Uh, say hello, Vincent. And uh, he kind of gives you the up and down. Doesn't really say anything, though. Just hold out a hand to shake it. He takes it somewhat hesitantly. Um, Mr. Mr. Amara's in town on business. Uh... He's uh, got himself into a little bit of a jam and uh, trying to trying to do what he can to to get out of it. Uh, however, Mister Amar is just leaving now, isn't he? He just kind of glares at her, but he goes and he leaves. Steps aside, steps away, steps out. Okay, and now that that bit of business is out of the way, uh, what happened last night? Well, let's see. Uh, I woke up. Uh, you know, the smell of Chinese food because, you know, I live above that Chinese place. All right, cut the shit, Chet. You know what I mean. What happened last night? Huh? We went to this place, and the dude was there, but he was staked, and there were a lot of goons. So we had to call the sheriff in case we had to kill a bunch of thin bloods. Okay, so Sheriff Jones knows that Diego's in town, or Marco's in town. <sighs> what happened to the thin blood priest? She's being sat on. Where? It escapes me at this moment. Okay, I need you to roll. We're going to get into some social combat here. Um, I need you to roll. Uh, let's go. You get composure and you you can get composure and either persuasion or intimidation, whichever one of those is higher. Okay. Um if I if I take half at three, is it even worth rolling? I have two dice. Okay, um, so we we can just we can uh, we can just say that uh, mm -hmm, she she knows that you are uh... all right. Chet, listen. If I got manipulation and subterfuge, I will let you. Uh, you know what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I could also I could have also surged on that too. All right. You know if you want to go ahead. Uh, you 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 come up with your best social dice pool. What is that, it? That is uh, yep, that's that. <laughs> okay, and I will be nice and I will take half at three. Okay, you need to beat three. How's that? We're gonna blood surge. <laughs> okay, we rolled a two on the blood surge. Right, so you're hunger three now. Uh, hu hunger two. Hunger two. I don't think. My thing went up. Hunger too. Two more dice. 
You need to drink her. Drink and her I can't... dry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do it. How are you so <laughs> <laughs> Four! <laughs> nice! <laughs> nice! I'm gonna give you a second to unpucker there. Hold on. <laughs> no, I'm still puckered. <laughs> I'm not out of this yet. <laughs> mm. uh, so, uh, you know, plausible deniability is only going to get you so far, Chet. Eventually, I'm going to have to know what happened with her. And eventually, we're going to need to figure out where the hell Marco went. Wait, Church, that wasn't you? No. I assumed that was you. It wasn't me. Okay, so new update. I probably don't know where she currently is. Okay. All right, this is interesting then. No, I, 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 I knew that the church got hit. I didn't... I have no word on Marco, though. Yeah, I'm wondering if whoever hit that church hit the theoretical stash house that she may be in that I may not have knowledge of. Uh, you, you got lucky on the one roll there, sir. I don't want I don't think you want to <laughs> don't push it. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay then. Listen, you you have a new priority. Uh, I don't give a shit what happened to the thin blood bitch. I need to figure out what happened to Marco. Okay, and then what? And then you let me know what happened to Marco, and we'll go from there. You want me to let you know first? Yes. Immediately. Okay. I need to know immediately what happened with Marco. Okay. I think I can do that. Um, do not blow me off again. Yes, man. I mean it. It is only because of the fact that the situation is so fluid that I haven't sent things after you. And you know what I'm capable of doing, Chet. Yep, yep, I know all about those things. That cross is useless. You can throw it away, stick it up your ass. Do but it looks cool though, right? If if you insist, Chet, <laughs> but you need to that 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 little dollar store piece of costume jewelry isn't going to save you if I really wanted to go after you, and I just want to remind you of that fact. Okay, though. You have a job. Get to work. Okay. And now we'll go ahead and we'll pivot over to Danny and Liza, who have uh, pulled back into the parking lot of uh, uh, St. Valentine's here to go, uh, go back to reconnoiter with the Heartbreakers. Um... Did the two of you want to have any uh, any conversation while you're on your way over? Cat's fucked, isn't he? Yeah. He got himself in a lot of shit. I mean, I guess we should probably try and help him, but... I mean, if he doesn't call us, if he doesn't say he wants help, we don't know if he, you know, hasn't, like, gone and, like, just gone to work uh with her. He's. We met him already, torso deep in shit. It seems like so. It might be a little difficult to pull him out, 
seeing all the stuff that's being piled on us right now too um well i don't necessarily I, want to root pull for him. him out of i'm it. rooting for the buddy yeah yeah i mean i don't necessarily want to pull him out of it completely i just want to make sure that none of it actually sprays over on us pretty much it's a good solid plan there <laughs> so the two of you get uh, get to the parking lot um and you can uh you can see uh uh the the place has gotten even busier. Uh, there must have been, you know, a, a show or something had gotten out of the gotten out of the Orpheum. Um, but uh, yeah, you can see that there's actually a few uh, like longer town cars, not full limos. Uh, the 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 new money in Sioux City is not that gauche, um, but you know, some longer town cars, uh, kind of taking up. Uh, some of the frontage and uh, the, you know, the they're double parking in the parking lot, taking up space because why not? Um, but the uh, Zeke is there to greet you uh, at the back service door. Uh, the Heartbreakers have a very strict uh, business in the back when they're busy. Um Well, uh, you're you're back early. Yeah, things didn't go as planned. Um, sadly, so we thought we'd regroup and make plans from here and get everything taken care of. Hopefully, get stuff off your hands. Uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, you're minus one. What's going on there? Uh, he's. Uh, I'll be back later. He's dealing with some of his uh, other business stuff right now. <sighs> if you pardon my familiarity, you kindred or something else sometimes. I don't even know how you... I have a hard enough time managing these guys. That I, I don't even want to imagine what it would be like working directly for someone like Israel. It's a... Uh... It's a job. It's a living. It's an unliving. And uh, the the two of you know that uh, Zeke's Zeke's been a ghoul longer than some of the newer kindred have been kindred in the city. Uh, so Zeke's Zeke's one of those useful ghouls that's been around the block a few times and basically knows the score better than most. Um, but uh, Zeke. Uh, he does seem to be kind of milling about anxiously. Um, the, 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 the reason why I ask is, uh, uh, I've, I've noticed that things have been getting kind of interesting, um, with Prince Jimenez's office lately, and I get the feeling that there is something going on. Uh, and not just whatever the the current situation in the basement is, but just in general. Yeah, I find it I find it very difficult to pin the basement situation with an overall feel of what's going on. But I I'm starting to feel that too. It's definitely uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm getting pulled by uh, three different directions at this point in time, trying to gather what's actually going on. Well, Zeke, I mean, you've been around. You know that these freaking politicians don't know what the hell they're doing and try and make everybody else do their shit for them, and it all just gets messed up, and everybody's just backstabbing each other, you know, working for one person when they say they're working for another, all that other shit. So... It's not really surprising that something's going on in the prison's office. Like, I mean, come on. You know it. Uh, the more more so than usual. There's... Uh, I I know that uh, there's, there's something that's going on with the Anarchs down south in Omaha. Um, and... Uh, been sending smart ass messages in zoom there i'm sorry i have to acknowledge that <laughs> <laughs> but uh the, the 
my my kindred have been have been busier than normal as well and the 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 prince has been stopping by more frequently uh i i know that well and he kind of looks around real quiet um i know that the 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 ventru that that worked for me got called away to chicago directly by prince jackson i don't know what that is about but it involves the anarchs down south and i think i heard something about fiorenza savona being involved as well this city is getting to be a bit too hot for my liking and whatever this is that's going on right now i don't know if this is going to be the thing that sets it off or not but this is there's just way too many things way too many threads getting pulled at the same time and i do not like it one bit no. You need oh. to get out, chat, or not chat. This you need to get out, Zeke. Oh no, I I I love doing what I do. The no, I mean, if you don't feel safe anymore, we get you out. Oh, I I would not have uh, I. Regardless of who signs my paychecks, both on paper and in blood. I, I know that I'm going to be looked after. I I know that someone in my station were easily overlooked, but were indispensable. I'm going to land on my feet, no matter how this plays out. I've okay. I I I'm re I'm resourceful. You do not you do not get to be a ghoul as long as I have without picking up a few things. I do appreciate the offer, but. Uh, between my current employers and Prince Jimenez, between the two of them, I will, I'll, I'll be fine. All right. Well, you know, we all got to look after, look after our peeps, right? So. Exactly. But we've, uh, you can, you can trust me and mine. We, we will, t we'll, we'll take a look after your guests though. That's not going to be an issue. Actually, I was going to see if we can go talk to our guests real quick to get a little bit more information. Yeah. Oh, of course. By, by all means. And uh, on the way there, do you think Zeke, I can get a, a, a bag from you? Oh, of course. Of course. And, uh, Thanks, Zeke. You're more than welcome. Uh, anything for you, ma'am? No, I'm good. I'm not peckish yet. Um, you know, I'll probably get there by the end of the night, obviously, but, you know, I'm good. Good. Uh, and he will lead the two of you inside. So now we're going to go back over to Chet here. Uh, so, so Chet, um, you've, uh, you, you've somehow managed to, to squeak by bluffing your very dangerous, very, very scary boss. Um, and you've, you've been given, you've been given a task and, uh, things are going to be, become very interesting in Chet's life here in the very near future. Be become? Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, exponentially increase. How's that? <laughs> Look, yep. we're going to the moon, like AMC. Hey! Diamond hands. The GM. <laughs> so, um, what's uh, what's Chet's uh, plan of action here? Uh, he's gonna call uh, his buddy who's got the van. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> get it back, Ray. Ray, I need the van back. I'll pay you whatever. And uh, he'll uh, he'll he'll say uh, uh thirty an hour. And it's only been an hour and a half, so you're, yeah, you should be good. Here's 45, you know your value. And he, uh, he sends you the Venmo, and, mm -hmm. uh, yep, you, you, you hook him up, and you now have your van back. Uh, holding the van hostage. It, well, yeah. Uh, but, and he'll, uh, he'll, he'll Uber his ass home, so you, you don't, you don't have to worry about, uh, the, the detour there. 
Uh, so now, so Chet has his van. Chet's got his baby back. Now what is Chet's game plan? Uh, gonna text the group. How's it going? I am still alive. Liza that text way, back. They'll know it's me. Liza text back. Glad to hear it. What do you want? I don't know. Did you know that it wasn't uh other boss at the church? Like she has no idea what happened to that church. Liza looks at Danny because obviously they're reading the text message at the same time. <laughs> so Chet then is telling us that it's not Elizabeth doing this? Hmm. Okay, that shit's fucked up. I'm gonna see where the sheriff is. Alright, um, are you calling him or texting him? I'm gonna text him. Okay, what are you gonna text? Uh, hey, sweet pea. Just missing you. Whether and where you're at. XOXO. He texts back. You know, boo. I'm all of. I'm all about that grind. Making my money. Uh, what you doing? Staying low. Like you said. I heard about a situation from where we were last night. Question mark, question mark. Uh, There is a long pause before you get a response back, and it is in the form of a phone call. Oh, sweet peace calling me. Uh, Hello. And you, uh, is he listening to Rage Against the Machine? You're not entirely too sure. Kind of weird. Uh, where are you? Where we have secured the priest. Where are you? I'm out taking care of some stuff. Uh, th- they're cool with the, with having the house guest? They seem to be. Well, it's extra security, too, just in case somebody's trying to find her. Right. Um, and Zeke's, so... Zeke's resourceful like that, too. You, you keep an eye on him, just in general, just he's he, he he's crafty he seems like it um so word around the campfire is the church was touched yeah i have no idea who was involved with that uh my contacts in local PD are coming up zilch. Okay. Um, you're working on other things. Do you want us just to prioritize this situation or do you want us to stay put still? Stay put still. I, I don't want anyone doing anything until I know the score. There's too many things still in motion that I don't have pegged down yet. Uh, tell you what. Why don't you keep the priest on ice and uh, 
I will get back to you when I have a little bit more to go on. There's there's a few there's a few more heads I need to knock together before I can do anything else. And I'll get back to you. Sounds good. Any new info, I will uh, let you know. Sounds good. And he hangs up. Sugar Bear's mad at us. Not too mad at us, but uh, he wants us to hunker down still. Um, mm. And it didn't sound like it was him at the church either. Well, somebody's doing something, and I think that uh, Sugar Bear knows more than he says he knows. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, what do we tell Chet? Well, you can tell Chet now when he when he uh, he Chet is uh, rejoining the scene now. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll yeah we'll we'll say that Chet's uh, while the two of you have had or while uh, Danny was having his conversation and the two of you have had your side conversation that's given Chet the time to get to um, the heartbreaker or to the Saint Valentine's so we can say the 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 two or the two of you and Zeke have been kind of milling around in the parking lot when. Uh, Chet's van pulls up. I'll wait till Chet gets out of the van and just go, congratulations! Not yet. <laughs> well, you, you made it this far. Yeah, but I'm definitely on the shit list. Aren't well, we all? better on the shit list than, you know, a pile of ash, right? I mean, I think I'd prefer being a pile of ash to what she said she was going to do to me. Well, but she didn't do anything to you. Not yeah. yet. Not yet. Which means that there's a long time until something's going to happen to you. Or something's going to happen to me for a really long time. I.e. the downside to living forever. Well, I mean, we're all <clears throat> hounds to the game, so. So all let's... Right. Maybe ask uh, the priest uh, where they may have had a secondary stronghold. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we get to decide if we're going to follow the uh, sheriff's rule or not. Also, fun yeah. fact, you know, said quote, said quote, I don't give a shit about the priest. All Why right. You want to know where she was? Oh, well, I guess because the situation at the church. Is she, she actually wants... a priest? Like, I want to know this. Like, is Pastor Katie actually a priest? Because she doesn't act like a priest. No. I'm pretty sure she just uses that title to, like, do her cult shit or whatever, right? Can I be Duke? <laughs> Can That's be Duke. That's a pretty Duke. cool name. <laughs> Duke Danny Smiths. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the three of you, uh, Zeke goes up uh, back to the penthouse to deal with uh, Heartbreaker's <laughs> business. Uh, the three of you, he leaves you down in the basement to deal with Pastor Katie. Uh, I'm talking about nicknames again. <laughs> but um, there, uh, you can see that uh, there is a uh, uh, d down here in the basement. There, there hasn't been a lot of uh tlc given to the place uh there's you know they they definitely use it for storage um you can see where there's uh been uh the attempt to maybe start opening up some of the old speakeasy tunnels that connect the buildings downtown here um yes i, I see ben is intrigued at a character uh, but the uh the there is up against one of the sections of walls uh there's some uh the 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 bars don't go floor to ceiling the 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 basement here is uh actually like uh it's got 10 foot of clearance uh but the the cage itself is maybe like seven foot eight foot high uh and there it does leave room up above for you know a light or anything else that might need to go above the uh the little prison cell here that's been constructed um but you can see that uh, katie's still wearing the clothes from the night before uh there's um a 
discarded, you know, Little Caesars box. And uh, there's no sign of um, any waste or any trash. I mean, it's a very tidy space down here. Uh, but she sees the three of you and she stands up. And she kind of backs up against the wall. Yes. You have a lot of people angry at you. Who boy. I thought it was just going to be us, but you got you got the ivory tower looking you know, at you. Whew. We we basically kept you safe by putting you here because if we hadn't, they would have hunted you down. That's what we discovered this evening. I think they're actively surprised. searching right now. I'm yeah. honestly surprised they haven't found this yet. Yeah. Who's who's they? What who the, the what? The tower. Uh you got a sheriff looking for you. You got people who you, the person that you took, their friends are looking for you, and they have people around. Um I think the Sabbat and the Anarchs too. Like I'm pretty sure they're all the Anarchs down for south. You. Like it's it's yeah. bad. Sabbat? What's the Sabbat? Yeah. What? I I I, I they're oh, evil. Oh, us. you poor All child. You know is you fucked up worse than I have. And that's pretty and bad. And that's hard. Yeah. yeah. That's hard. Uh, uh, okay, so hold hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, yeah, I, you're hitting me with like everything at once. I still don't know who the fuck you people are. I don't know where the fuck I am. I don't know who the fuck that pudgy old bastard upstairs is. I hey, he gave you pizza. Remember that. Valid point. Valid also, point. Also, you know, don't 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 make fun of a man someone's size. That's that's rude. Well, okay. Also, look, valid point. Look, but... Katie. Katie. Yes. All you need to know is, we are the people that kept you from getting ashed that's all you need to know you don't need to know who we are as a you know w- you know what political place we sit in we saved your ass so that whole church you're gonna answer you're gonna answer danny's questions if you mm-hmm. could because otherwise we're gonna make sure that your ass does not get saved for another night what about the yeah, church it's gone tore up Yep. Your crew didn't even your crew didn't even make it to the basement. What do you mean? Like is it got like are the doors busted from the outside in? Blood everywhere. You you can see even even for her being a thin blood, there there's still a beast inside her. And you can see her struggling to to maintain composure but she does eventually clamp down on whatever urge was rising in her throat <sighs> this is very important oh they're th- oh they're all dead they're, they're all this gone? is the vi- this is the important part i didn't see any ash they still might be out there we we don't... i need to know I need to know where your secondary place would be. We don't have one, and we don't... You haven't spent a lot of time around us. We don't leave ash. We leave bodies. Well, either somebody's cleaned up or they got out. And I'm trying to look on the... Uh, I'm trying to be optimistic for you here um, with everything that's going on. Um, we pretty much need to know where they could have gone to and where they would have taken Marco. Who's they? Marco's the key. Your crew. Well, no, my my crew was at the church. No, your crew is not at the church anymore. Oh, I... Dead or alive, they are not at the church. Well, if they're not at the church, then I don't know where they're at. They're either dead or scattered. Oh, God. You guys don't have do you a have system, like do you? a? Do you guys have? Yeah, you guys didn't have like a point where you regroup if everything, you know, goes to shit, like a, a fallback point or something like that. That that was that. That's all we had. Yeah, yeah. What have, kind of organization are you? 
Yeah. No offense. There's, I know it's a little hard. We're criticize us. In the cage. We're look. We're when when you when you are made into what we are, and you people treat us like how you treat us. We don't have a lot of resources at our disposal, like some of you old bastards. You all are probably, what, two, three hundred years old? Oh, I only uh, wish. You know what? I'm a little insulted by that. Well, you're... I'm only a hundred and twenty. She kind of gestures around the room, or around the, the cell, and you're treating me like everyone else always treats us. Oh, no, uh, no, we're not, because I haven't killed you yet. Exactly. Listen. If we were going to treat you like everybody else treats you, you wouldn't be around. You know that whole, like, Camarilla, Gehenna, like, you know, end of times, kill all the thin bloods thing? Yeah. What? We're not what? doing uh, that uh, right uh, now, what? so. It's fine, Bada Joaquin. Yes. Yeah, and she she actually looks at Chet for a minute. And you, you licked the boot. I don't know you exactly, but I know who you were. And, and you, I'm still that same guy. You used to be like us, and now you're not. Did you just tell him, try to use the, you used to be cool, what happened on me? I invented that. She... Uh, storyteller, was this something this was something that Danny and Liza would have been aware of that, you know he, Yeah, I... you 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 would have you would have known that he um yeah that he, he would have he was a thin blood and he won a blood hunt. That that's okay. that uh, you 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 don't get to I think that was what we established, wasn't it, Ben? I think we talked about it last session, yeah. 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 And, and right. the the three of you would not have worked as long as you have without that information being publicly known, at least um, inside the coterie. Ed, I, we haven't killed you yet, but you have a lot of people who are looking for you dead right now. It'd be easy just to let you go, and you're probably making a good quarter mile down the road before they find you, because I'm pretty sure they know that we're here, and they're just not touching it, because this is a very special spot. What's and so special your about best it? chance. I'm, it's special. Okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of important uh, people that live here. Mm. Ben, you or Chet, you were gonna say something. And your best way out of here is in my bulletproof van. She just seems to. <sighs> How about this? How about you help us find what we need to find? And we get you on a train the hell out of here by the end of the night. Gives Sold. you a chance to live. So there we go. Sold. I'm gonna need. To... All right. Fine. Just let me out. No. We'll 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 we'll, we'll get this done. And that is where we will wrap up <laughs> our vampire story for the night. Woo! Yeah. So they're a, a little, a little on the shorter side, but uh, uh, since it's basically just us today during the uh, vampire takeover, I don't have to worry about uh, we do whatever we want. Exactly. We miss you, Philly, by night. Please come back. I know. Uh, this This was just... The, this weekend was just so friggin' weird for scheduling and timing that it just... It's like, okay, Jason is on break. Delves had to... Delves had to take the week off. Philly, Philly took the week off. And it was just like... I have no life. <laughs> Labor, hey. Day, Labor yeah. Day vampire La La Labor Day vampire. So it's like, all right, hey... Uh, we we got the we got the band back together for for another uh, excursion of uh, twisting ashes here, so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll we'll do outros and we'll wrap this up. So uh, Steve, why don't you uh, get the ball rolling here? Hey guys, this is Steve Rieger, uh, creative partner at Martlet, uh, playing Mr. Danny Smiths for you here, the Gangrel. 
Um, as of right now, uh, London's bleeding is on hiatus until we have some other um, stuff roll out. Uh, that's going to be another quarter that we have going out. Uh, the quarter that we're having right now does have one of my games in it. Uh, we will be putting out here in the next couple months a redo of my indie anarchs relaunch 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 i don't like redo relaunch. um the relaunch of uh the aka they decided to put my city in the stories and now i have to use the books so well we don't have know. to use the books it's just it, it, it's we ni- want to it's nicer for community continuity absolutely mm-hmm. so and, and i was pretty close anyway so it wasn't too far off just had to change some clans around that's it but um, you can catch me um, hanging out with the Carrion folks uh, in their chat rooms. Uh, you can catch me um, through many of the Twitch rooms that we're going to be in. The game that you're playing right now probably has me in there right now talking to me. Steve, say hi. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully I was there. And uh, that's all I got. So uh, I'll catch you guys later. All right. And next up, we've got Ben. Hi, Ben, Big Dad Walker with Carrying Cover Studios. Uh, I had a blast playing Chet again. Uh, a character with almost no social skills and no chill. Uh, <laughs> uh, and somehow knows magic without knowing anything about the occult. Uh, it's it's just, the you're just following a recipe. You're, you're following a recipe. Yeah. That's all you gotta do. Yep. Yeah. Um, so... On September 11th, my wife is making her Vampire 5th Edition debut as a storyteller by running Fangs in Space, a story about vampires in fucking space. Ooh. Uh, it's going to be on Gehenna Gaming, and I think it's a fundraiser for, she sent it to me, uh, for a firefighter charity. Mm. Ooh. Um, fundraiser for Friends of Firefighters. So if you can give, that'd be cool. Again, it's on September 11th. Um, check it out. Uh, I want to plug my friend Wes's game that he's in. It's on Tuesdays. If you like Hades, if you like teen romance, it's a Monster Hearts actual play of where the Hades universe is just put into a high school. Uh, he plays as Than, and he does a bang-up job of it. Sometimes he paints his face, kind of like uh, Darby Allen. There was a wrestling episode. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. And I'm trying to see if I can get saucy this weekend. Um. Since it is a three day weekend, let me just crunch some numbers and check with some people. Mm. But I'm also going to be on um, Fortple Tales on this Saturday for a drunk stream oh. from the from the uh, from the uh, charity fundraiser for um, uh, Love Your Rebellion. Um, one of the incentives was drunk stream, and we're going to be playing cra- uh, Crash Pandas. Oh, awesome! I do. I yes, I do love me some Crash Pandas. That's nice stuff. Yeah. And then you can also find me there on Monday nights playing Delta Green as National Park Service law enforcement agent uh, Agent Walter. <laughs> and yeah, we're. Uh, we're... I, I love Delta Green, and uh, though he's got the hat handy. There you go. <laughs> and uh, we're we're uh, here at Martler. We're definitely going to be getting into more Cthulhu in general, and Delta Green's just the icing on the cake there. So, uh, last here for the outro. Uh, there it is. Beyond the Mountains of Madness. Yes. Uh, we'll go ahead then, and uh, Joe. Go ahead, and you can wrap up the the, the cast outro here. All righty. Uh, so my name is Joanna, and I was playing Liza, your uh, ass-kicking Toreador who didn't get to kick any ass this time. Kind of sucked, but that's okay. Next time. Um, you <laughs> I could have beat Chet. It would have been. Great. I only threatened. I only threatened. I, I didn't verbally. actually do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you will find me on Saturdays generally on the Delve into Darkness uh, Vampire Game over on Vancouver by Night, uh, where we have wrapped up meeting Changelings. 
this time around and uh, I, I can't wait to see what happens to us next because I can only assume we're going to get like mummies or something like that thrown at us. Um, you will also find me on uh, Vancouver by Night's uh, Changeling Game on Wednesdays. Um, the Changeling Game is set in Toronto, even though it's Vancouver by Night, uh, and I am playing uh, Lara Applewood, a pisky who seems to like to steal things because, you know, pisky right mm -hmm. uh well. so you will find me on twitter at hyrule gardener um and my links will be in the chat and yeah come check out vancouver by night uh where you know we do fun stuff yeah uh so hi patrick gill creative director of Martha the games here uh this has been twisting ashes our wonderful little uh ad hoc one shot uh everyone was just happened to be available and it was a uh like i already had the overlay i'm like hey we need to fill some time on saturday and we we are saturday now so uh but all three of you, all, all three of these wonderful lovely individuals that you see on screen answered the call when it was handed out and uh i i said we were going to be bringing this group back and it took a couple of months get it yeah we got there <laughs> And we are definitely still going to be seeing more of this lovely group. Um, uh, I was telling everyone in intermission, everyone's, uh, I'm starting to really feel the characters gelling now. The character chemistry is starting to kick in. Everyone got the, uh, the first time play jitters out of the way. And this group is, it's got some teeth to it. And I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, how else hashtag pre for chat there <laughs> that'll we're gonna rate we're gonna raid into something tonight I don't know what but that'll be our raid calls pre for chat hashtag pray for chat uh, now as far as Martlet scheduling in general uh, we've got one two three uh. Four, Four, we'll call them main production games, currently in various states of work, either getting ready to film, uh, getting writing ready to start filming, or is ready to film, but just other things have taken more pressing uh, matters, or have taken more priority. Actually, that's, I said four or five, five games. Yeah. Um, one shots out the wazoo coming up. We've got, uh, Sam has a 10 candles game coming up. Uh, we, we've talked about getting some blue beards coming in. Yeah. There's, uh, I've mentioned Cthulhu. Uh, we're, we're, we're planning a, a huge, just like horror your face off October. And I, that that's kind of that's kind of catchy. I'm gonna have to work on that title. But word your face off. But uh, so the month of September, you're gonna it's gonna be quiet on the channel. I'm gonna let you know that now. There's gonna be plenty of uh, me playing video games to help fill the time. There's gonna be some random one shots popping off here and there whenever they uh, whenever time is available. But there's. Uh, we're, we're definitely gathering our forces, gir girding our loins, harnessing our chi, whatever you want to, yeah. Tons of shit coming out is what I'm trying to say. But, <laughs> love you all. Thank you all once again for for uh, hopping on the, the stream. Lovely cast peoples. Thank you all for watching. We're raiding into somebody, don't know who. Um... Time permitting, you know what? Fuck it. We might have a live segment. Who knows? After this. We'll see. Anyways. Where we go, we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing but chaos here at Martlet Games, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Love you all. Bye-bye.